Okay, today we're going to spend a few minutes here looking at the Spanish-American War. Uh, Secretary of State John Hay uh, is the one that titled it a splendid little war uh, based on the fact that it was a, a relatively short uh, conflict between the United States and Spain. One of the big uh, factors that helped bring the United States into a, the Spanish-American War was the idea of yellow journalism. Uh, we had two people that were uh, really involved heavily in yellow journalism. One here was uh, William Randolph Hearst, uh, the famous newspaper uh, editor and, and publisher of the New York Journal. And another one, and you might recognize his last name, and that's Joseph Pulitzer. Pulitzer ran the New York world. These two were competing for newspaper sales. So they would exaggerate and uh, sensationalize stories, especially in Cuba, about the Spanish atrocities that they were committing against the Cuban citizens uh, to try to drum up support for, for American intervention in Cuba. Uh, exactly, of course, was what happened. And that's how the, uh, what got us involved in the Spanish-American War. The main incident uh, that brings us into it is the sinking of the Maine that took place in February of 1898. Now, yellow journalism had helped drive support of, excuse me, of, uh, of American intervention in Cuba. It helped us, it helped the American government and pushed the American government to uh, to order the battleship Maine to Havana and order uh, tacitly to protect American business interests, but also to investigate uh, these so so-called atrocities that the Spanish were committing against the uh, against the Cubans. Now, what was proven uh, later on, but we did not know at the time, uh, when the Maine exploded in Havana Harbor in February of 1898, 260 American sailors were killed. Uh, immediately, the uh, the outcry was that it must have been something that the Spanish had done, uh, whether it was some sort of uh, torpedo or a mine or even a uh, a diver with a bomb. Uh, we did not know, but uh, it was assumed that the Spanish were at fault. Later on, we found out uh, that, in fact, it was uh, in the coal storage facility. Uh, the gas had built up and ignited and exploded in what caused the main to sink. Uh, and the Spanish actually had nothing to do with it. But hey, you know, whatever starts a good war, that's what we're going to go with. So we declare war on Spain on April 25th of 1898 some two months after uh, the battleship Maine explodes. Here you see this President McKinley, uh, one of the uh, political cartoons of the day we see up here, of course, uh, waiting for the facts at the top of the screen. Off in the, battle, off in the background here is uh, the investigative committee coming to uh, figure out what exactly happened on the Maine. This is William Randolph Hearst's uh, New York Journal. It's at the top, crisis at hand, Spanish treachery. Uh, and then, nice and in small type here, beneath the, beneath, in between their cabinet in session, uh, growing belief. Kind of gets lost in the fray. Uh, perfect example here of yellow journalism. Again, another example from the New York Journal. Another cartoon of the day, McKinley holding back Uncle Sam. Obviously, this one is very much pro-war. Now, when we declare war on, on April 25th of 1898, uh, most of its people, most of the people, would assume that the Spanish-American War would be fought in Cuba and around Cuba. That is not the case. Uh, Spain is an imperial power. Uh, on the quite the decline, uh, which uh, this war will kind of finish off the job, but uh, we were uh, we had our eyes on a number of, of po Spanish possessions across the globe. One being the Philippines. So the first actual battle of the Spanish-American War does not take place anywhere near Cuba, but half the world away in Manila Harbor. And our uh, Navy, led by Admiral Dewey. Uh, defeat or inflicts a crushing defeat upon the Spanish Navy in Manila Harbor. Uh, oddly, trying to figure out why uh, we were there, our 
esteemed Assistant Secretary of the Navy, Theodore Roosevelt, uh, ordered Dewey there, uh, even though that uh, that was the actual purvey and job of the Secretary of the Navy. Uh, but uh, the Secretary of the Navy at the time uh, enjoyed his trips to Maine and uh, did not really care for Washington. He left most of the responsibility to his assistant, Theodore Roosevelt, who uh, was more than happy to take on the role uh, of the real Secretary of the Navy and uh, kind of gets to do what he wants, wants to do. Of course, Teddy now resigns uh, his post and forms the Rough Riders, the first volunteer cavalry. Um, Admiral Dewey, of course, crushes the Spanish Navy and leads to what we end up with, uh, the occupation of the Philippines, much to the chagrin of the Filipinos who were, at the time, trying to keep the Spanish out. And now, they're, instead of being allies with us, uh, now we are going to be enemies. Over in the Caribbean, where most of the, of the focus was, uh, we had the Cubans who had been fighting for independence uh, against the Spanish. Uh, the, the main kind of the martyr of the cause, uh, a gentleman by the name of Jose Marti, uh, and uh, the American government was there to uh, to hopefully ensure that the, the American businesses that had invested money in Cuba and uh, in Puerto Rico uh, would not suffer. So. Uh, the, they helped to uh, protect those business interests. Of course, the most famous battle of the war, the Battle of San Juan Hill, uh, where Thet Theodore Roosevelt and his first cavalry, the Rough Riders, charge up Kettle Hill, which is the neighbor hill to, to San Juan Hill, capture Kettle Hill, and then turn and look and move in on the fight up San Juan Hill. By far, uh, the, the biggest problem was not Spanish bullets, uh, but uh, the mosquito carrying yellow fever and malaria. Uh, the the most pe most soldiers that were killed during uh, the Spanish American War are not killed by war, but actually by disease. One of the great long term effects of uh, the, the Spanish American War is that on Cuba, Dr. Walter Reed discovers that malaria and yellow fever are transmitted by mosquito. This will be a, ma a major factor in our construction of the Panama Canal. We also capture Puerto Rico from the Spanish. Uh, Roosevelt comes home a national hero, and he writes a bestseller titled, of course, The Rough Riders. The Rough Riders is this glorious uh, book. Uh, and, of course, nothing in the book is, uh, is negative in, in relation to the, to the Rough Riders. It's all written from the perspective of, of Roosevelt. And... Uh, you would think that uh, they were the greatest fighting force ever assembled. Uh, they did suffer more casualties than anybody else. Uh, Roosevelt had no training, no, no formal military training. Uh, he had been able to use his position in the government to, uh, to secure the second in command of the Rough Riders. And uh, when the, the commander of the, of the first volunteer cavalry, a gentleman by the name of Leonard Wood, resign, or actually, sorry, he did not resign. Uh, he was promoted. Uh, that left good old Teddy Roosevelt to now be uh, in command of the Rough Riders. And to give, uh, to give Roosevelt uh, credit, and uh, he knew what he was doing. He had hired uh, newspaper and magazine reporters to come with him. And uh, so all the exploits of the Rough Riders were immediately uh, sent back to the newspapers and magazines back in the United States where the exploits were uh, printed, and it helps Roosevelt become a household name. But Roosevelt also literally led the assault up San Juan Hill. Uh, now, as a cavalry group, they should have all been on horseback, but uh, there was not enough sh uh, room on the ships to go from Florida to Cuba. So instead of uh, fighting as a cavalry, they fought as infantry, uh, Roosevelt uh, did have a horse uh, as the commander, and uh, he rode his horse uh, up the hill and then uh, got off his horse and started firing. Uh, whether or not he actually hit anybody, I do not know. But uh, all the accounts will actually say that Roosevelt literally did lead his men up the hill. I'm going to skip through there. Uh, the Spanish, uh, unfortunately for them, 
uh, this does not, this war does not go well, and they sue for peace with the Treaty of Paris of 1898. This is our third Treaty of Paris in American history, so we have to make sure we know that this is 1898. What do we get out of it? As the United States, we acquire the Philippines. We get control of Cuba, uh, Puerto Rico, and Guam. And of course, Cuba technically is going to now be independent. And uh, this is not a cut and dry decision. The Senate uh, ratifies the treaty in February of 1898, 19, 1899. Uh, so in the span of one year, we have now acquired uh, the Philippines, Cuba, Puerto Rico, Guam, and Hawaii. So we have a, a liking to islands uh, and nice tropical beaches. When the war is over, Roosevelt is elected governor of New York. Uh, we have now become an imperial power. And you can see here that uh, it was a great war in one respect in that uh, in these what, five or six months of fighting, uh, we only had 385 American soldiers that were killed, uh, yet over 2,000 are, uh, are killed by non-combat fatalities, most of these being uh, yellow fever or malaria. And we all come home happy. Okay, our next uh, lecture will be on the Panama Canal. So you guys be ready for that one.